is up YouTube back for another episode hope you're all having an amazing day and uh, let me start off by saying I love my rear wing the duckbill wing uh, but there's a few things I want to change for one uh, there's a lot of dips and waves in it that I like to try to get out of it it's very visible which I don't like all right man got this thing out the car and of course it was pouring down the rain I got drenched <laughs> but anyways so, this is one I want to show you guys. If you can see, see all those, see up here's not bad and stuff, but if you look right in there, see all those wrinkles real bad right in through there? There's more of it right in through here. And probably the worst of it, as you can see, right in through this section right here. Now, some of it's just from the paint where it curled up, but this other stuff, like right in here, that's all just from where it came out of the mold. It's kind of like that all the way on through there. All right, man, as you can tell, I've been doing some sanding. <laughs> all right, so I've got this thing all sanded up. Now, uh, so I actually was just going to do all the holes, and I decided, now eh, I'm on here. Might as well just go ahead and sand the whole thing. So the whole thing is sanded, prepped, and ready. So now I still need to take this thing and put it in the shower and get it all washed up beforehand. But, see, because how these things are angled, angles down like that I'm probably gonna have to do like uh, like I can probably get away with doing these three right here and then stop and then I'll have to do those two stop do those two you know what I mean to tilt it up get them even so that it's not like you know cockeyed in the hole or anything like that so but basically what I'm gonna do is you can see just like that just putting a piece of tape on it right like that when it's all over, peel the tape off, and I'll still be able to see the hole to re-drill it. So I'll know exactly where to re-drill, and this should be pretty easy. It's just going to take this beginning thing of going through all these holes and patching them is what's going to take the most amount of time. So now let me go ahead, get this thing in the shower, and get it all nice and cleaned up. What up, bros? It's a new day, and I'm ready to get started on this thing. So i got some 220 here. So let me go over something that I'm wanting to change about this. So, one of the things I hate about this is that these little divots. And the reason why I don't like these is because whenever you put the washers in there, the washers naturally are drawn down inside there. And some of them aren't like perfectly even. So, as you can see, it like crinkles the paint, rips the paint, does this, that, and whatever. I would rather have it to where these are perfectly flush. You don't see any holes anywhere. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sand every one of these holes front and back and put a piece of tape on the back of everything. And I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, put resin in all these holes, fill all the holes with resin. You don't want to use Bondo because there could be issues with uh, the resin wanting to stick to the Bondo. So just in, I'm just going to do it like everybody else says to do it and actually just just sand it and just just fill it with a uh, resin and then it'll be nice and flat and then I can sand it smooth and everything and then what I'll end up having to do is once I carbon fiber it and get everything done then I'll actually go back through on the bottom and just redrill the holes out just redrill every hole not a big deal but then everything will set flush like you won't see none of this it'll just look like this and it would set nice and flush and we'll have to worry about it you know being angled or cockeyed or any of that stuff it'll just look a lot smoother and cleaner so let me go ahead and take this 220 i'm not going to go over the whole thing right now i'm literally just going to go over these holes because i'll go over the whole thing once all the holes are filled and i'm trying to get those nice and level and smooth but for right now let me just go over all the holes and get those prepped and ready okay got this thing nice and clean so now i'm going to go ahead and do is got a rag and some alcohol. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean inside every one of these holes and then on the inside I'm gonna go ahead and uh, also clean around every hole so I can put some tape on there. So let me go ahead and clean everything with alcohol and then I'll go ahead and tape all the holes off and we'll go from there. Alright bros, got everything cleaned up with alcohol and took my time, went through, got everything taped off. Every single hole. That's what it looks like in here. Nice. The other side. Good to go. 
So basically what I'll end up doing is uh, I'll kind of tilt it back where I can get it as even as possible. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to go ahead and knock these three right here out. Then I'll have to tilt it up on its side to do those two. Same scenario with those two. And then we can start on the back. It'll be the same thing. Three. Then I'll have to do those two separate and the two separate on the end. So shouldn't be too bad. Shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so I feel that's pretty level. Again, those are kind of tilted. That's okay. I think it'll set in there just good enough. So let's go ahead and mix up some resin and we'll go ahead and do these three holes right here. It's kind of unfortunate I have to mix up so much at a time, but you know, it is what it is without scales at this point. So now I can go ahead and put this in here, mix it up really good for two full minutes, and then we'll be good to go. All right, so I went ahead and said screw it and uh, went ahead and did everything but the side ones here. Just did all these. And you see some of us running off a little bit, it's okay. So what I'm doing is I'm waiting for it to start to thicken up. Then once it starts to thicken up, I can actually take it and kind of, I can push it back, just get it to stay there. But for the most part, it's filled up and that's all that really matters. Anything outside of it, I can sand it right down, not a big deal. So looking good, man, it's looking good. All right, bro, so I got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five of those done. I just got the ends to do right here. Uh, as you can see, I got it kind of fashioned up like this to help kind of keep it nice and even. Uh, those are two dry, so now I can actually flip it up, and I'll go ahead and do these two, and then I'll have to do these by themselves. So let me go ahead and get this basically transferred over here, and then I can go ahead and do these. And I don't want to keep boring you guys with this part because this is just really tedious and takes forever. So let me go ahead and get all the holes filled in and then we'll come back and start sanding. What up, bros? It's a new day and finally all holes are patched. Uh, actually, just finishing this one right here. It's actually still a little soft, but about an hour or two, this will be ready to start sanding. Uh... So yeah, let me give us an hour or two, and then I'm gonna break out the 220 sandpaper and just start scuffing this all up, trying to get it nice and smooth. There's some places, well you can see like that, where there is a pretty big dip and I'll have to go back over them. It's on a seed now that I honestly, you know, at least I got everything filled up, you know I mean, just little inconsistencies. Um, I should have done them one at a time to have to avoid this, but I was just trying to knock out a bunch of them not waste a bunch of resin and stuff but i think we'll be all right man there's just just little spots here and there so uh yeah let me give it about an hour or two and then we'll break out the sandpaper and start sanding the spots man okay man this thing is looking good so let me say for the back here and let me go ahead and show you guys with this little washer okay so my goal here was to just get these flat they don't have to be perfect but just Nice and flat, so that when you put those on there, see what I mean? It'll sit nice and flush. They won't be like, you know, kind of sitting down inside or anything like that. So, so far, the only thing that I feel needs addressed on this, a few little spots for the most part, though, this one right here, which has still got a really bad, kind of missed that whole area right there. As you can see, that one kind of still dips down inside there, and definitely don't want that. So other than that spot, I'm pretty happy with everything on the back so far. Uh, now on the front, I'm pretty well happy with all these down through here along the main part. Uh, maybe a few little spots here and there, maybe. But for the most part, I want to work on these corners. Like, like this over here, you can see how this dips in real bad still. It's still like down in a hole like that. I need to fill all that in. I want it to be nice and smooth down through there. Basically, exactly like I did this side. You can see this side is much better. Still a little dip right in there. But once again, you can see, still better than it was. But I'm going to go ahead and fill that gap in right there. Fix that back one. And then fill in this gap right here. And then, uh, honestly, I think I'll be pretty happy with it. So, with that being said, let me go ahead and work on these other corners and that back piece and uh, get it sanded and we'll come back. I'll let you guys check it out, man. Also found the key is to not use the resin when you first mix it up. Because when you first mix it up and you put it on here, 
it's uh it's like uh super watery like super watery so i found the best thing to do is just keep coming back and checking it every five to 15 minutes you know just keep an eye on it because you know even five minutes alone can make a world of difference when this stuff is uh starting to harden up so i just keep going to the point where when i take it out it's just barely wanting to drip off my stirring stick and then i know i can put it on here and i'll get it to stay like before you know i put it on here and it's just so water it wants to run and trying to get this thing set perfectly level and all that it's just a pain when if you just wait until the stuff's thick enough once you put it on there, it's not going to move. It's going to set exactly where you put it. And I found that to be the key. And I actually did, well, I'm not sure if I videotaped or not, but did everything last night instead of just doing one spot, did everything in one, one swoop. So that's my intentions for the other side for tonight. So Also seems easier to work with when it's a little thicker. Like thinner is just so watery it's really hard to get it to lay out the way you want and you let it thicken up man it just does exactly what you want it to so just a little piece of advice for you guys man what up bros a new day and this thing's getting very close man so as for the back it is done i'm more than happy with all those holes after the front all the holes in the center are good uh so all i'm wanting to do right now as you can see where I said I'd need to add a little bit more, just a little dip right in there. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that over. And then after that, just a tiny little dip right in there that I want to fix. And then this thing is good to go ahead and put the carbon fiber fabric on it. So let me go ahead, put the resin in those two spots, sand them down, and then we should be ready, bros. So I'll see you then. Peace. What up bros, new day and I actually decided to make some big changes so let me go ahead and explain what I'm talking about. Okay, so I was gonna actually skin this in carbon fiber but I've changed my mind. So let me explain. Uh, so the way the Z is, the way I have a, a mix of uh, carbon fiber and then stuff's painted black, you know, it's like front bumper's black, hood and front fender's carbon fiber. Uh, then I have uh, A pillars, B pillars, mirror bases, and door handles black. And then, of course, doors and roof, carbon fiber. And then the rear hatch and rear quarter panels, carbon fiber. And then the rear bumper, uh, black. And the gas door is, uh, is black. So I thought that this meshed really well being black on the back because it kind of, you know, just the color, the color meshed really well. And I just don't think, I don't think carbon fiber would look that great. Now, here's the thing. If I actually molded this thing into the rear hatch, then I think it would look absolutely amazing. But since I'm not molding it in, I just think it would kind of look offset. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go ahead and make this thing black again. But you remember I was telling you guys about the waves and imperfections in this that I didn't like. Well, I'm going to fix that. Here's the issue. I suck with Bondo, guys. <laughs> I'm terrible with Bondo, man. I've never had luck with it, which is on the front, the symbol that I had on there. I ended up uh, doing away with that, Bondo in it. You guys remember, and then um, paint it and all that stuff. But the Bondo started separating and cracking and stuff like that. And uh, I noticed my mirror base is starting to do that a little bit too, just a little tiny bit. And it's just because I'm terrible with Bondo, man. I'm terrible with Bondo. So my idea is I'm going to use resin to actually level this thing out. Uh, I'm just gonna do three uh, three layers of resin and it should fill in any holes, any perfections. It should also, where those waves are in it, should build that up enough where those waves are gone. And then of course you gotta remember the uh, primer, the thick paint that I use, uh, clear, coat, uh, clear coat and all that should build it up enough where that shouldn't be visible anymore. That's my goal anyways. So I'll do as many layers as I can, sand it down, see what it looks like, and we'll go from there. But I want it to be nice and smooth, man. I just I'm love I'm in love with the fact that these bold holes are gone. I think that's gonna look amazing. So with that being said, uh you guys know how this works, man. Let me go ahead and grab the Oxy Ultra Deluxe sponge, get this thing in the bathroom, get it nice and cleaned up, then we'll get it back in here and uh go from there. Alright, bros. Thing's been nice and cleaned up, so now it's time for the alcohol 
in the microfiber towels. All right, this thing's been properly cleaned, so now we can go ahead and mix up the resin. What up, bros? It's a new day. Started sanding on this thing, looking good. So as you can see, like up here, there used to be some little holes that were all across through here. Those are all gone, filled in. Uh, down through here, so much smoother over top of these holes and stuff. Much better, man, much better. In case you guys are wondering, I'm actually going over this with 100. Um, I may go back over that with uh, 220 afterwards just to take the crazy deep scratches out. Uh, but yeah, everything's looking good, man. It's just taking forever. I really wish I had a little palm sander. I could just zip right through this. It'd be amazing. So I might actually do that. I don't know. So let me keep sanding on this thing, man, and we'll come back. What up, bros? The new day, and I got tired of sanding that thing by hand, man. So I did myself a favor and actually went and bought this electric sander. Uh, now, I've actually already got it sanded. It's good to go, but I just wanted you guys to check this thing out. It's actually amazing, man. So here's the hook and loop design sandpaper. In other words, it's just Velcro. And here's the sander. This thing's amazing, man. Absolutely amazing. But I will say this, I'd have been sanding for uh, a good solid day on that thing, or just hours and hours, and I was done in 15 minutes, uh, went over it with the 100, and then I went back over it with uh, 220, just to get some of the rough grit out of it, a lot of the sanding scratches, and here it is, bros. You can see it's a little more rough over here where... I did it with 100. I didn't quite go over as good as I did over here, but it doesn't matter. The paint and primer and all that good stuff will cover it. So, yeah. I'm happy with it. Uh, still a little few little lumps here and there, but for the most part, I just wanted these things flat. You know what I'm saying? So, with that being said, now I've got the drill handy. I've got to go back through. I'm just going to flip this thing over and re-drill all these holes. So basically, all I have to do is just go right in the center of every one of those and then just drill right through. Should be for it. Should be fairly simple. It's so actually found a little trick to figure out where the holes are. Just took a flashlight, put it up underneath there, and you can see right where the hole is. And just drill right through. Super easy, bros. Okay, all the holes are drilled. Perfect. Nice. Good deal. All right, so with this thing sanded and the holes drilled, it is now time to get this thing nice and cleaned up and get it under primer, bros. So, you guys know the rules here. Oxy Ultra Deluxe sponge. Get this thing to shower, get it nice and cleaned up, and then we'll be back. Okay, man. Just got this thing nice and cleaned up, so while that is drying, I need to go ahead and get the room set up. Which actually used to be pretty easy, but uh, once you get a girlfriend, bros, there's a lot more stuff you gotta go through and cover up. <laughs> and I don't actually mean just more stuff to cover up in general. I just mean more stuff that I need to cover up better to protect myself from the verbal thrashing I'll receive if I get overspray all over her things. <laughs> Bam! Alrighty, bros, room is set up, so now... I'm going to do the usual, get some 90% alcohol, microfiber towels, and get this thing nice and clean, man. All right, man. This thing's nice and cleaned up, so now we go ahead and start spraying the primer. You guys know the same stuff I use. I've been using for a while now. It's, uh, it's actually sandable. This stuff's actually pretty amazing. And it's a lighter color gray, too, which makes being able to see the paint when you go over top of it much easier to see the places that you got and the places you haven't got. day and this thing is finally all nice and cured perfect nice this thing looks amazing so now uh, I'm gonna do what I normally do and I'm gonna use some 320 grit and the reason why I'm using 320 grit it's gonna leave some scratches on there but uh 
Uh, you guys know the paint that I use. It's uh, acrylic enamel, which is super thick stuff, which normally covers up like minor imperfections. Like if you're going to use 320, you don't want to sit there and dig in as hard as you can and put deep scratches. You're just trying to scuff it so that you can get something for the paint to grab to. Because I remember last time I did this and I painted the bumper after I got the bumper painted black, I was like, oh man, you can still see the scratches everywhere, but as soon as I put the clear coat on there, it just shines so, so bright, like you can't, you can't see any of the scratches or flaws anymore. So with that being said, bros, let me go ahead and take this 320, go over this thing, give it a nice good scuff, and then we will be ready for paint and clear coat. Okay, this thing is officially sanded, bros. Nice. Looking good. It all sanded all the way around. Perfect. So this thing's ready for paint and clear coat, bros. But you guys know the rules, man. Grab the Oxy Ultra Deluxe. Grab a sponge. Get this thing in the bathroom. And let's get it cleaned up, man. And, of course, transfer this room from the bedroom to a paint booth. <laughs> what up, bros? It's a new day. And I'm so ready to get this thing painted, man. This thing is ready. Got it all nice and scratched up with 220 grit. So now you guys know the rules, man. Grab some Oxy Ultra Deluxe sponge, get it in the bathroom, get this thing nice and washed up, and then of course transfer this room. Bam! Room is set up, bros. And this thing is officially clean. So now I just need to let this thing air dry and we'll go from there. Okay, this thing's officially washed up, so now on to the second part of the cleansing, and that is alcohol microfiber towels. Now remember, this thing's got primer on it. No 90% alcohol. Use 90, it'll strip the primer off there and smear it everywhere. You have all kinds of issues. You no more than 70%. All right, man, this thing is ready to be sprayed. Uh, just got to let the rest of the alcohol evaporate a little bit, and I'm working on shaking up spray paint as we speak. Alrighty bros, two coats are on. Looking amazing. Nice. Now, for those of you new to the channel, I use Spray Max 2K Clear. Always have used it on everything on my car. This stuff is absolutely amazing. So the best thing to do, first off, shake the can up really good because this is a two-part urethane. Uh, so shake the can up really good for about two or three minutes. Okay, once you get it shook up real good for about three minutes, you just want to pop this little red top piece off here. Put this on the bottom. Press down really hard to hear a loud pop, right like that. And what that does, that releases a hardener, releases the hardener into here, and you basically have a spray gun in your hand. Uh, so now you want to shake this up really good for about three or four minutes. All right, man. Second coat is on and done. I don't want to bore you guys with all the coats. I do four coats. It's more than enough. And then uh, we'll cut back. This thing is looking amazing, bros. Yeah. What up, YouTube? It's a new day. It is absolutely freezing out here. <laughs> but uh, I'm ready to get this wing back on here, man. The wing is done, officially clear coated. So right now I'm just going through, getting all these bolts back off here so I can get this thing back on here. So, let me freeze to death and get all these bolts off here and we'll go from there. And for those of you wondering, yes, I am going through and replacing all rubber washers. Anytime you use those once and mash them down, you want to replace them after that. Alrighty, bros, all the bolts are officially out, so let's go grab the wing. Alrighty, bros, the wing is on and looking absolutely amazing. But I don't want to stand out here and freeze anymore, so you guys know what time it is.
guys can see, man, it looks so much better without the holes and just being smooth. I love that. And I got a lot of the ripples out of it, too. It looks so much better than it did before. I'm so happy with it now, bros. So there you have it, man. As you can see, it looks so much better, man. Like all the waves. I got a lot of the waves out. Uh, the little indentations that went around the bolts. That's the biggest thing that I love. So much better, man. So much better. So that's going to wrap this one up, man. If you guys like the video, make sure you smash that thumbs up. If you guys new to the channel, see some more of my content, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you guys hit the bell notification. You should be notified of my newest content. And uh, 